Good morning, Houston. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Kim Castro. We just received our 10 o'clock update from the National Hurricane Center, so I want to show you the latest on Hurricane Barrel. It is still a Category 5 hurricane with maximum sustained wind speeds at 160 miles an hour. The pressure has increased ever so slightly, but it's still a very powerful storm moving west-northwest at 22 miles an hour. This is what I'm looking at on satellite imagery. Infrared imagery shows me that it's starting to lose some of its convection on the west and north side of the storm. It's an interacting with some wind shear. So slowly throughout the day, it's going to lose some of its intensity. But right now, heavy downpours, gusty wind, a storm surge threat for Puerto Rico pushing into Hispaniola right now, the Dominican Republic starting to see those outer bands. Haiti will see some of those outer band impacts here in the next few hours. For that reason, a tropical storm warning for the Dominican Republic and for Haiti active right now. And then a hurricane warning for Jamaica behind that, the Cayman Islands under a hurricane watch because Right now, we're tracking the latest cone showing additional landfalls from Barrel as we head into the next couple of days. So let me show you the updated track for Barrel. Right now, still a Cat 5 expected to weaken to a Cat 4 throughout the evening, making landfall over Jamaica as a major hurricane still. Category 3 timestamp on this sometime late Wednesday afternoon into the early evening. It continues its track over the Cayman Islands as a Category 2 hurricane and then pushes towards the Yucatan somewhere between Tulum and Cancun as a Category 1 hurricane. At this point, we are timestamp at Friday morning. Beyond that, as it heads into the Gulf, the National Hurricane Hurricane Center has this weakening into a tropical storm, but right now you'll notice the cone really widens. There's a lot of uncertainty as to what happens in the Gulf, and I'm going to walk you through why that is and why we need to start making our preparations. Texas needs to be on the lookout for uh, Hurricane Barrel as it continues pushing through the Caribbean, and then eventually we'll see what's left of it as it gets into the Gulf. Right now I showed you it's starting to get broken apart a little bit on the west side and the north side because it's finally moving into an environment where there's wind shear. So far for the life cycle of barrel, it's moved through a pretty favorable atmosphere, favorable to its strengthening. But as it moves into an environment that's a little less conducive to its strengthening, it's gonna combat some surface level winds and upper level winds that are gonna start to break the storm apart. And that's gonna be the trend as it tracks through the Caribbean and then land interactions are going to play a factor in the weakening of barrel as well. So we'll see how far north it tracks. Right now it's really on par to make a direct landfall with Jamaica. So this would be four landfalls. We had the first one in the Woodward Islands. The second one would be Jamaica. The third one would be the Cayman Islands. And then the fourth would be the Yucatan. And then again, watching what happens in the Gulf. Why have we seen kind of the probabilities expand a little bit as far as what track it would take instead of going straight into Mexico? Well, because of the upper level steering currents. Right now we're under a ridge of high pressure in the Houston area. That's what's keeping those temperatures really hot. Humidity levels are up. As we go into tomorrow, that ridge starts to slide towards the east. What happens here is a ridge of high pressure provides not only the heat dome, but kind of like a shield, a protective barrier over the area that it's on top of. So Florida gets this protective shield, and now you'll notice the Lone Star State is exposed a little bit. The steering currents right now could flow into Mexico. They could flow a little bit further north. It all depends on how far north the storm tracks and how it reacts to the land masses that it touches. So that's why I say, Keep an eye on Hurricane Barrel throughout this week and just start thinking about some of those hurricane preps that you need to have made for hurricane season regardless. Yes, Barrel will weaken throughout the next coming days. Yes, Barrel right now is forecast to be a tropical storm. It's going to interact with quite a bit of land. However, as you'll notice, the spaghetti plot models are very all over the place as to what's going to happen beyond that. So that's why we're many days out from the storm entering the Gulf. In fact, right now where it stands, we're six days out from any potential impacts to the continental U.S. So we have a lot of time to watch the storm, to see how it 
develops, how it loses its intensity, how it interacts with land, how it moves either further north or further south, and then we have plenty of time to make those preparations too. Right now, what you need to be doing if you live along the coastline, perhaps you are planning to vacation along the coastline or you have a vacation home, know your evacuation plan. That's the first and foremost thing that you need to do is know your risk. If you're along the coastline, then you're prone to risks when it comes to storm surge or rib currents, things of that sort. If you're inland, you're prone to the risk of power outages and, you know, if it comes to a stronger storm, either with this one or later on in the season, we could see threats with flooding and things of that nature. So just know your risk. Inland communities should at least have a five day supply of food, of water, of medication. And then what you need to be doing is also keeping tabs on the forecast each and every day. The cone shifts and we get updates after it makes uh, a progression through the Caribbean. After barrel makes a progression through the different countries that it touches, we'll get an updated track. So just make sure you keep tabs on the forecast at least once a day. I'm gonna give a little update on this in Spanish as well. So this is gonna be the Spanish section. Right now, estoy monitoreando el huracán Barrel que todavía tiene la categoría 5 con esos vientos sostenidos de 160 millas por hora. Por el momento está trayendo unas lluvias, unos chubascos a la área de Puerto Rico, también trae impactos a la área de la isla Dominica, Dominican Republic y también al país de Haití. Estoy monitoreando a los impactos que tendrá ya que siga continuando por el mar Caribe. Perderá un poco de su intensidad ya que lleguemos a mañana por la noche. Será un huracán de categoría 3. En este momento tocará tierra a la isla de Jamaica. Ya que continúe tocará más impactos a las islas Cayman de categoría 2 y continúa a, hacia México ya que lleguemos al viernes por la mañana como un huracán de categoría 1. Lo que sucede ya que pase México y se entre al área del Golfo, todavía estamos monitoreando qué podrá suceder, pero por el momento será un sistema tropical. Por eso tiene que monitorear el pronóstico todos los días y tiene que hacer estas preparaciones. Es que vive a lo largo de la costa, uh, comuníquese con su familia y conozca su plan de evacuación. Si es que vive en la ciudad, Reúna los recursos, tenga comida, agua y medicamentos por lo menos por los siguientes cinco días. Y por supuesto, manténganse atentos y alertos al pronóstico todos los días. Make sure you get your forecast somehow, some way. We'll have updates uh, live on air, on social media, and on our webpage. We'll have articles too about this historic storm barrel. It is the earliest in the season. It is the earliest on record. Cat 5 hurricane like this. The last time we had one was in 2005 with Hurricane Emily. And that record was for July 11th. So this became a Cat 5 hurricane July 1st. It's now July 2nd and it is still a category five storm. Remember, it's expected to slowly lose some intensity. So we'll give you updates as it does that and as we get them on X or Twitter, whatever you call it, Instagram and on Facebook.